only bomb that InfoWars ever runs as we prepare to launch to the next and final level of global awakening. Because as Mahatma Gandhi famously said, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they attack you, then you win. We are in that process of being massively attacked and in the face, we're charging up, getting ready and going in. Go to infowars.com forward slash money bomb for all the information. And in closing, I want to say this to all of you patriots out there across the globe that have spread the word about our operation and that have supported us. History is happening right now. The destiny of humanity is being decided right now. And InfoWars, which you, the viewers and listeners and activists stand at the heart of, is the engine that has made all this possible. You're not standing behind the InfoWar. You are standing at the center of it. You are right beside us in this fight. And I guarantee you, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Sam Adams would be incredibly proud of what you've done in defense of human freedom, in defense of true liberty. So from myself, Alex Jones, and the entire InfoWars crew, we salute you. Join us this September 16th and 17th for the 27-hour Money Bomb in defense of human liberty. First John 519 20 We know that we are of God and that the whole world lies in the power of the evil one and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding that so we may know him who is true so you gotta be able to judge who's good and who's bad in the world and we are in him who is true in his son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Again, and we know that the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. Undoubtedly, ladies and gentlemen, we are now in the power of the evil one. And the decision's been made, the death race has begun, the trigger's being pulled, and this is the big test. Everybody thinks you're just going to lay down and it's going to leave you alone. No, that's what the wolves go after first. And just great judgment is coming upon this country. So much evil is going on. The three minutes we have left, you're going to be on for an hour next week at least. Breaking more of this down, stevequell.com. Tell me about your new film coming out. Tell me about the book that accompanies it at stevequell.com. Well, interesting, Alex. Technology of the fallen delayed due to the discovery of historical documents. You can go to your listeners and go to True Legend, the series, legends, plural, the series.com. We found when Tim Alberino went to South America, this is critical. We found documents that have not been seen by anybody for 450 years talking about the supernatural nature of the sexual perversion of the giants. People that don't believe this, you know, I can't do anything about your unbelief, but even Diodorus, famous historian, kind of an author, 400, you know, 500 uh, years before Jesus. Bottom line is, Alex, the subject matter of supernatural evil, and you just laid it out, the Bohemian Grove and all these people, you know, they're being promised now something. They're being promised the same lie that Eve was told in the Garden of Eden. Ye shall not surely die. Sure, well, that's the, I mean, I, I mean that's the Nephilim. I mean, uh, look at the yeah. movie Prometheus, where it's giants as well. They're just throwing it in our right. face. Well, listen, the, my new book, and this is really important, Genesis 6 Giants first came out, well, I think, 10, 15 years ago. I, the whole thing has been redone. 60, 70% of it's new. But what's fascinating, True Legends, the series, it's almost like we were given a, a time lock into the ancient past to validate and verify even stories that the Incas, to Incans and the Mayans and the Aztec told that was you know, basically in their uh, oral tradition and in their Stile is that when the giants went after each other to sodomize each other, that literally lightning came down from heaven. Now, what's a shot on that? Uh, you know, or what's the chance of that 450 years ago? How about this? Conquistadors 
putting their sword in the eye socket of a giant, and a conquistador sword can be 36 to 42 inches, and barely touching the back of the skull. People say, well, that's just, that's just them making it up. It's a universal thing. So true legends of the series, where we've got the first episode pretty much done. As a matter of fact, when I get off with you, I'm going to film my last part, and I think people's minds are going to be blown away. Because when you understand who's been covering up, let me address one thing real quick. How is it that the Pope is pushing for a one world government, he's speaking against capitalism, and yet in the same breath he's saying he believes in the devil and demons? You know why he made that statement? Guess who are going to be made out to be the devil and demons? Anybody who resists the New World Order. Again, True Legends, the series.com. My book, Genesis 6 Giants, is available on my website, stevequail.com. And from the, from the response I'm getting from all over the world, people are saying thank you. Now, Oh, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it with my children. Uh, very interesting. Steve Quayle, thank you. We'll talk to you again next week. Steve Thanks, Quayle, Alex. you bet. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. Coming up, the breaking news about the recruiting center situation, the evacuation. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. We're here live. Back weeknight, 7 o'clock Central. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Jim Mars, an old friend of mine, the first guy to teach a college-level course on the JFK assassination, the crime beat reporter, Back when, basically when JFK got killed for the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, uh, he looks a lot younger than he actually is. Uh, he's my, everybody's favorite uh, historian. I don't know, man, you are, you are a living legend. But I guess you've been involved since you were really, really young. You even went to the same nightclub that uh, Jack Ruby would hang out in. And you've had a whole bunch of New York Times, you know, top 10 bestsellers, TV shows made out of what you've done. Uh, the movie JFK, based on your book. Worked on that with Oliver Stone. Just an amazing guy. Good friend of mine. Good to see you. You're going to be speaking at Brave New Books. Uh, Population Control is one of your most important books, and I've read most of them. How Corporate Owners Are Killing Us. Jim Mars, best-selling author of Rule by Secrecy and the Trillion Dollar Conspiracy. And he joins us to break this down. But first, I want to go to this report and get his take on it. Uh, Tampa recruiting offices evacuated due to threat. Unspecified shooting threat comes one week after Chattanooga shooting. Joe Biggs and uh, Josh Owen shot the video of smugglers at 60 yards away bringing in masses of drugs, basically during Trump's visit to the border. That was on Drudge and made national news last night. Now Joe uh, is talking to the recruiting offices, got them to go on record. They've evacuated all the Tampa facilities, won't let them be armed, won't let citizens come stand out front. Uh, and now this has happened. Here's Joe Biggs' report. With the text, the tweets, all the evidence, red linked at Infowars.com. Here it is. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now, about 40 minutes ago, I got a tweet from a friend who lives in Georgia whose son lives down in Florida and roommates with a recruiter. Now, this recruiter says that they have been ordered to evacuate all the recruiting stations in the Tampa area due to a threat. Now, I talked about this earlier in the week when I was standing guard in front of the recruiter's office in South Park Meadows in the south part of Austin. One of the recruiters from one of the departments came out and said that they were getting threats in Las Vegas and in Florida. Now it looks like they have taken it to another level with a direct threat in Tampa Bay. So these guys have evacuated. And I know this because I personally have called numerous locations in the Tampa area and gotten zero answers. The phone just rings and or goes to a voice recording. So this is happening right now. We're gonna keep our eyes on it. Stay alert if you're in the Tampa area, if you have the ability to swing by one of these places and see if they are indeed open or if they are vacant, give us a, a tip on the video below. I'm Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com. Joe Biggs doing a great job of breaking news stories uh, every day, just ferreting around. It really has a nose for investigative reporting and also tracking the Internet, uh, which I know you teach journalism as well. I tell you, mainstream media doesn't do its job anymore. That's giving rise to the new media that's almost about to supplant the old dinosaur media. And here you are with a leg in each world, population control, how corporate owners are killing us, available at Amazon.com and bookstores everywhere. Mr. Mars, is good to have you here with us. Let me tell you what the uh, uh, greatest irony is on this gun thing, okay? Here we've got tr trained military people who've been trained on firearms, but they won't let them go armed.
<laughs> to protect themselves. But the greatest irony is, is that you'll find in my new book, Population Control, that uh, the United States of America over the past couple of decades is the arms merchant of the world. We provide 78%, according to congressional records, of all the arms sold to everybody around the world, including, of course, the ISIS and Al-Qaeda and all the rest of it. And half the global... Half the global uh, expenditure is just on us. Yes. So we provide 78% of all arms in, to people in the world. And then we look at Russia and China. Russia's 5%, China, China's 3%. So we, we sell more arms than Russia and China combined all around the world. And yet here in our own country, they want to take guns away from everybody. It's amazing. Aren't you a veteran yourself? Yes, I was in the Army during Vietnam. What do you make of the situation where we now know they're, they've put 200 plus thousand veterans on don't treat list and just say go die. We've known for a year and they just keep doing it. It seems like I thought if we exposed evil, a lot of times it would get turned around back in your day or even when I was on air 20 years ago. Now the evil comes out, the IRS persecutes people a thousand times times Nixon literally and don't get in trouble. Well, hey, come on, look at it, Alex. Uh, uh, veterans are the most dangerous group to them because not only are veterans patriotic, but veterans uh, have weapons and know how to use them. Common sense. You brought it up. I don't want to bring up a story. I'm in. It just shows the insanity. We can put it on screen if they have it. Yesterday, I remember it was two days ago, Salon, that basically takes White House talking points and regurgitates them, came out and said that the Planned Parenthood video is a hoax. Planned Parenthood admits it's real. And that I'm basically the bad guy, that Margaret Sanger was not a racist. There it is. Conspiracy theorists have hijacked the GOP. What happens when Trump, Cruz, and Carson start following Alex Jones' lead? And goes, the Planned Parenthood hoax is a case study in how we're deceptive. Uh, they admit this. It's not a hoax. You know, the, the, well, we're into, uh, we're, we're into a Nostradamus, the famous uh, 16th century seer said that we're going to go into a time period when black is white and white is black, up is down, down is up. And believe me, that's that's where we are, right? Peace is war. <laughs> well, well, you've you've actually written a book that a lot of it was about Margaret Sanger and the Nazi influence in the U.S. Right. And we even have some slides in there. Some of it's in this book. Tell us about Margaret Sanger since they say she was a loving person. Well, yeah. And I'm the racist. You, you have to go back and understand about the eugenicist movement, okay? Eugenics came up in the late 1800s, and it was basically started right here in the United States, in fact, in California, and was supported by some of the wealthiest, biggest-named people in the country, the Harrimans, the Mellons, the Rockefellers, and, and eugenics is basically, let's uh, uh, have the perfect race. You know, if you had the wrong skin color or the wrong bone structure or your IQ wasn't up to their standards, uh, by the 1930s, most every state had sterilization laws, okay? And you could be sterilized involuntarily. But what happened was is that the Germans got hold of that and said, hey, that's pretty good. And the Nazis took power and they carried it to its logical extreme, which is, well, we have some people like Jews and gypsies that we think uh, uh, might dirty the gene pool. So they just said, we'll just kill them. And they had World War II and we had the Holocaust. And the people in the world went, wait a minute, you know, we can't just go around killing people. So today, if you'll talk to these globalists, they're all still very much eugenicists. And they will say flat out, in fact, they have it etched in stone in Georgia, at the Georgia Guidestones. Ted Turner. He says, we want to maintain the human population at 500 million. That's a 90 plus percent reduction. Right, which begs begs the question, well, wait a minute, what's supposed to happen to the other 7 billion of us? And more importantly, who's going to decide who stays and who goes? And how are they going to get rid of us? Well, the Nazis show that uh, they'll run into trouble if they try to just shoot people and hang them and kill them. So what they're doing is they are slowly thinning the human herd through bad food, bad air, bad water, bad vaccines, do you know the third leading cause of death in America today after heart attacks and cancer is conventional medical treatment? I didn't know that. <laughs> I want to get into your book. It's simply amazing and it's solution based to understand what to avoid. And, and, and is along the line that I'm focusing on exposing the breakaway civilization is poisoning us so that they can basically just phase us out and, and they can and profit from it and profit while they do it. That's the genius of these people. 
They're not dumb. And there's kind of an argument. If we put up with it, maybe we deserve it. But I want to ask you a selfish question because I grew up hearing how great Texas was and how we were the smartest, the toughest, the most honorable, blah, blah, blah. Lord knows a lot of bad comes out of Texas, too. But now that I've studied history and traveled the world, I do know that Texas is certainly um, exceptional. The military.